Second talk today is by Marcos Jardim from uh, the University of Campinas, Unicamp, in the state of Sao Paulo. And he's going to talk on instaton sheaves and uh, rank two sheaves on P3. OK, so thanks, Eduardo, and uh, Eduardo and the other organizers for the invitation and the opportunity to give this talk. So let me start talking about the moduli space of semi-stable sheaves on P3. So I'm going to denote by curly MC this moduli space of uh, rank two semi-stable uh, sheaves, torsion-free sheaves, with zero first-turn class second turn class equals C, and zero third turn class. Uh, this is something that uh, people have been looking a lot in the past many, many years. We know this is a projective variety. So this is a projective variety. This is on P3, yes. Sheaves on P3, sorry. <coughs> And it turns out that it has uh, many irreducible components. So uh, M1 has one component. M2 has three components. And uh, starting already for M3, it's not known how many components it has. Uh, it has at least two components, but it may have more. Inside here, inside uh, MC, curly MC, I'm going to define the straight MC, which consists of the locally free sheets. So this is the moduli of stable vector bundles with these uh, Churn classes, and it turns out that this variety also has many reducible components. So, um, for vector bundles M1 and M2 uh, have just one component, this means that curly M2 has two components whose generic point is a torsion-free, non-locally free sheaf. M3 and M4 have two components. And M5 has three components. And then uh, for M6 onwards, it's not known how many components are there. What I improved, so there's a paper by I, um, 80 something, can't quite re remember the date. So I improved that the number of components goes to infinity as C increases. Right? So the larger the charge, the number of components of locally free sheaves gets larger and larger. Um, so <clears throat> what we are, one of the results we, uh, we want to show is first that, uh, so we find some new components Some new, let me say, new torsion free components at 
we put between quotes. By that I mean uh, components of the moduli space of torsion-free sheaves whose general point is a torsion-free sheaf, right? So these components will contain no locally free sheaves. Um, so we find new torsion-free components in M3, M3 and in M5. And we also have a good amount of evidence that would show that the number of torsion-free components also goes to infinity as C increases, right? So the number of components that do not contain locally free sheaves also increases with the, with the second churn class. Um, which brings me to the first part of the title, instantum sheaves, because the sheaves in these two components will be uh, what I call instantum sheaves. So let me, uh, so that's, that's for introduction. Let me start now talking about instantum sheaves. <coughs> So the moduli, uh, this moduli space, this Maruyama moduli space, the curly M, has one uh, particularly nice component which uh, consists of uh, the instanton bundle. So instanton bundles are defined, well, there are various ways of, of uh, defining instanton bundles. So first, So one definition is a stable rank two bundle with H1 of E minus two is equal to zero. So this is perhaps the, the oldest way to define stable bundles. In the literature, this is called the mathematical instanton bundles. But this is the same as saying that uh, is a, a a locally free sheaf with H0 of E minus one, H1 E minus two equals zero. Here I'm always, always assuming that C1 equals zero uh, and rank is two, right? So, so maybe I should write here. So stable rank two bundle with C1 equals zero And here, another way to define is uh, rank two bundle with uh, C1 E equals zero, H1, sorry, H zero. Okay. So this is uh, another way to define. And a third definition so all of these are equivalent among each other. The third definition, uh, it's in terms of monads. Uh, so let me write what I mean here. And let me explain on the side what a monad is. So this is a monad. So a monad, in general, is a complex of sheaves, is a complex of sheaves, or better said, locally free sheaves, which I'm gonna call A, B, and C, maps alpha and beta, where uh, alpha is assumed to be injective beta surjective <coughs> and then the sheaf given by the kernel of beta by the image of alpha is called the cohomology the cohomology of of this monad okay so instanton sheaves can be characterized in each of these ways and they they have this name because they come from from gauge theory they are really related. I'm not going to explain how today, but they are related to um, 
anti-self dual connections on the Euclidean or on the round four sphere. Okay. <clears throat> so be it's because of this link with, uh, with the gauge theory that people have been studying this, uh, the moduli space of instanton bundles that I'm gonna denote like this, I see moduli space of instanton bundles. Since instanton bundles are stable, they uh, are contained in the Marugyama scheme, curly M. Um, and it was just recently that first Chikomirov shown that these are all irreducible. And uh, myself and Misha Verbitsky have shown that this is uh, non-singular and it has the expected dimension, which is 8c minus 3. Okay. Uh, so the next step here would be to understand the compactification of this, uh, of this moduli space of instanton bundles. And one way to understand the compactification, of course, there are various ways. You can, for instance, uh, think of them as monads and compactify the, uh, the, the monads. But the way w we are gonna do now is to look at the closure of this quasi-projective variety inside the Maruyama scheme, okay? So <coughs> let me take IC bar. So this is the closure of, uh, of IC in the Maruyama scheme, which we know is projective. So this IC bar, it's called the instanton component. It's always non-empty for every C. So in particular, the one component here in M1 and M2 are the, is the instanton component. So here in M3 and M4, you have the instanton component plus some other component and so on. Um, <clears throat> and we want to understand what is in the instanton boundary, which is what is in the closure minus the instanton bundles. So this is what we call the instanton boundary. It turns out that this is a very complicated uh, uh, gadget as well. It has many reducible components. In fact, one can show that as C increases, the number of reducible components of this thing also goes to infinity. Um, <clears throat> you may think that, well, I'm taking all the locally free sheaves out. So this boundary should contain only sheaves that are non-locally free, right? This is wrong. So the boundary also contains locally free sheaves, which are not instanton sheaves. And the first example of that occurs in C equals five. Um, but uh, what I'm gonna explain today is how to, uh, how to construct many torsion-free components in the instanton boundary. In other words, write down uh, some components of the instanton boundary that consists of torsion-free, non-locally free, non -free instanton sheaves. Okay. <clears throat> okay. But first, what can we say about uh, instanton sheaves, right? So, I, 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 so how do you generalize these definitions for sheaves that are not locally free? One way to do that is say, okay, so um, look at the monad, saying that the uh, alpha is in, well, saying that beta is subjective means that this map beta is subjective at every point, right? So these are 
these are bundles, so you can localize beta at each point of P3, and this saying that this beta is surjective means that this is surjective at every point. But alpha does not need to be injective at every point, right? So uh, the cohomology is a locally free sheaf if and only if alpha is injective at every point. If it's not, this can be something else, right? It can be a torsion-free or a reflexive non-locally free sheaf. Okay? <clears throat> so that's how we are going to define, uh, uh, that, that's the motivation behind the definition of uh, instanton sheaves, are all the torsion-free sheaves that you get as cohomologies of monads like that. So, so instanton sheaves. One way is to to uh, is to use the monad. So all the torsion-free sheaves that you will obtain as cohomologies of these linear monads. Or you can do a cohomological characterization, and that means H0 of E minus 1 So we need to add these other two uh, conditions. These two conditions follow from Serre duality and the fact that it's a rank two bundle. So the rank two bundle means that E dual is isomorphic to E. The rank two bundle with zero first rank class, right? So if you use this and uh, Serre duality, these two conditions would imply the last two conditions here. But since we don't have Serre duality for torsion free sheaves, we need to add these, right? So uh, uh, these are the two ways, two equivalent ways to define the uh, instanton sheets. <clears throat> okay. So what can we say about instanton sheets? In particular, what is the singular locus of an instanton sheaf? So just to remind the definition here. So if uh, F is any sheaf, the singular locus of F will be defined set theoretically as the set of points, say, in P3, such that the stock of the sheaf on X is uh, is not a free module. Okay. So this is what we call the singular locus of the sheaf. So in particular, what can you say about the singular locus of torsion-free sheaves, torsion-free instanton sheaves, of non-locally free instanton sheaves, better said. <clears throat> so the first observation here, and this is something uh, not very difficult, I'll explain later, is that uh, there are no uh, let me call properly reflexive by that I mean sheaves that are reflexive but not locally free so properly reflexive uh, instanton sheaves of rank 2 on P3 so here I should also add C1 of B equals zero, sorry. So it's here, forgot to add there. So every uh, instanton sheaf that is not locally free is gonna be torsion free, right? You, you cannot have uh, re reflexive sheaves there. And the theorem, which was proved uh, with a former student of mine, uh, Michael Gargatti, says the following. So first says that the singular locus of E uh, has pure dimension one. 
You cannot have isolated points in the, in the singular locus. The second um, part of the theorem says that the double jewel of V is an instanton bundle. And, well, the proof of this is not very hard. Well, not very hard once you've read a bunch of, a bunch of papers. Uh, let me give you uh, a hint of how this is proved, because I think it's easy enough to do it in public. Um, well, you, you start with, with, with the monad. And you can break the monad into two short exact sequences. This k here is the kernel of the map beta. Now you dualize both sequences remember we we want to say something about the dual of e so uh, the double dual of e so it's a good idea to to dualize so you dualize this and what you get is where this sheet Fe here is defined as the x1 of E0. <coughs> now you play with cohomologies, and you show that H0 of E dual minus 1 and uh, E1 of E dual minus 2 are both 0. On the other hand, you have this sequence here that zero, or that E goes into its double jewel, and you have a quotient where this sheath QE, well, the quotient. <coughs> and then you can show that, well, since this is torsion free, the dimension of this shift QE is smaller than one, smaller or equal than one. Uh, and then, well, you know that E is an instant of sheaf. You play with cohomologies. You get that uh, H2 of E double jewel and H3 with E double jewel minus three is zero. Okay? So now I have half of the conditions on E jewel and the other half of the conditions on the double jewel. Fortunately, Harshan has a very helpful result. Well, the, the jewel is a reflexive sheaf of rank two. has shown that whenever you have a, a rank two reflexive sheaf, then you have the same uh, relation that you have for vector bundles. So F joule is F twisted by the determinant inverse. Okay. So fortunate for us, the, uh, we can apply this to uh, apply to E joule using the fact that C1 of E dual is zero. And what you get is that E double dual is isomorphic to E dual. Okay? So 
there you go. You have half of the conditions on E joule, the other half of E double joule. You get that E double joule is an instanton sheaf. So it follows that E double joule is instanton. It's instanton and uh, it's reflexive, but we know there are no properly reflexive instanton sheaves, so this has to be locally free. Okay, uh, so that is for the second part of, of the theorem. The second part goes again by analyzing this sequence here. Let me give it a name, so star. So star implies that H zero of QE minus two is zero. So this shift QE has dimension one. So QE has uh, pure dimension one. Because if QE had some zero dimensional subsheaf, that, uh, you know, it, it would have section. Uh, now, the support, the, the singular locus, since E double joule is locally free, the singular locus of E is precisely the support of QE. So, uh, Thing E, at least as a, as a variety, has pure dimension one. Okay? So that's the simple proof of that. Hmm? Um, let re me remark, though, that both results are not true if you look at uh, instantons of higher rank. Right? So, if you come back to this monad here, this two is here is precisely the rank of the, of the sheaf, right? Now, if you change this two by some, some other r, say three, you can have uh, instanton sheaves that are reflexive but not locally free. You can have instanton sheaves with isolated singularities, and you can have rank three instanton sheaves whose sing singular locus is a point plus a line. So it doesn't have pure dimension as well. Right, so all these, uh, this is very specific of rank two. <clears throat> okay, so I stop here. So this is, these are not generic, right? So, yeah. so if you pick out beta and alpha genetically here, you get a bundle, right? So these are really in the, in the boundary, even, even if you think of the mon monads, this is in the boundary of monads. So the instanton sheaves are, uh, come from non-generic monads. Uh, no, no, the, these are instanton sheaves, including the locally free ones. Okay? So if, if, I, if I take a generic alpha, the cohomology here will be locally free. So you have to, to have, you know, to be out of luck, to pick out a bad alpha so that you end up with something torsion free, non-locally non free. Okay? <clears throat> so, this describes all instanton sheaves, including the locally frees. And what I mentioned before is that this definition really generalizes the, uh, the locally free ones because if the cohomology is locally free, then these two, by Serra duality and so on, implies the other two right, for locally free sheaves. Okay. Uh, but then this sequence here give us a hint, right? So, and the theorem, start with a locally free instanton and try to surject it into something that, it, that uh, is supported on a curve. 
And if you pick out your numbers right, the, uh, the kernel of this subjection should be an instanton, which is not locally free. Right? So with this in mind, uh, we can introduce the notion of a, an elementary transformation for instance. And the data is the following. So first, you take uh, a locally free instanton. Uh, with charge, the second chain class equals to C. The second element is A locally complete intersection curve in P3. Locally complete intersection. Locally complete intersection curve in P3. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to fix the degree of sigma to be D and the genus. The third element is uh, a line bundle of degree g minus 1 in sigma such that h0 of L and h1 of L are both 0. And third, well, these uh, three pieces of data are cheap. They are easy to get. The hard part is the subjective map from uh, E to D. So the uh, direct image of L twisted by 2. Uh, this 2 comes from P3. Uh, and then these conditions here and uh, this 2, also the number that I'm taking L to have degree G minus 1, are the correct numbers that conspire you to, to give proposition is that uh, F defined as the kernel of phi is uh, instantone. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so I'm picking out the right numbers so that uh, the third chain class will be zero, and the first chain class will also be zero. And I am picking uh, this condition here will give you, will give me the uh, the cohomological conditions for for the kernel to be an instanton as well. Okay. <clears throat> so some properties is that the second chain class of F will be C plus D. D is the degree of the curve here. The single locus of F is sigma. The double jewel of F is precisely E. Uh, and that quotient QF is precisely this sheaf here. Right. And the other fact that you can prove, for instance, is, well, uh, is Every, one can show that every uh, torsion-free instanton is mu semi-stable, but it's not clear whether it is Giesecker semi-stable. Um, but you can show that these are. So if sigma is irreducible, then um, 
f is stable. You can get stability without irreducibility of sigma, but this is just an example that uh, to, to make sure that, you know, to, to send a message that there is something to be proved, right? It, uh, it's not automatic that these guys will be in the Maruyama modular, modular space, okay? You have to prove stability or semi-stability for these things. Uh, okay, so this is uh, a mach This is the inverse machine of that, right? So if you if you start if you start with an instanton sheaf, you produce an instanton bundle and something supported on a curve. Now you go the other way around. So if you start with an instanton bundle and something supported on a curve, you produce an instanton sheaf. And then we do the easiest case, right? Which is, which one is everybody's favorite curve, right? A rational curve. So let's start looking at the case of uh, smooth rational curves. So when do you need the local complete definition? Well, in, in, in the proofs, in the proofs they do come up, yeah. Um, we need some properties uh, to simplify calculations with axts, and uh, uh, and then we know that for complete intersection, the x of the norm of uh, yeah the, the local x, uh, and then we can tie the local x of the uh, of these sheaves of the structural sheaf of the scheme with the normal bundle and so on. So we need this in order for. You're right that in principle, in this construction, just to defining the, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. May, maybe just for this proposition, you don't, don't need the local complete intersection, but then to prove the theorems, we really use that. Because in principle, QF could be supported in a very strange curve. Yes, yes. Uh, this thing here could be something very strange. It doesn't need to be, uh, it doesn't need to restrict to a line bundle on the curve. Right, so that is a simplified procedure. <clears throat> um, yeah. So now is five. Then we consider the following set uh, that we see. So the set of all Fs in the Maruyama scheme such that first the double joule of F, and I also mean isomorphism class, right? So the double joule of F is in is an instanton bundle of charge C minus D. So D here goes from one all the way to C. And uh, putting in a simplified manner, so the singular locus of F is a smooth rational curve of degree D. To be more precise, so more, more precisely, I mean that, that this shift QE is, uh, is supported on, on a smooth rational curve. So F double joule by F is O sigma twisted by 2D minus 1 times a point. So this is O sigma of 2D minus 1 points inside the rational curve. So it's precisely this, right here. Uh, I'm choosing sigma to be a smooth rational curve of degree D. Then you take L in peak, in peak minus 1. So L is uh, O sigma minus 1. But then I twist by 2 here. And then this 2 gets inside by uh, 2D 
points inside the curve. So it's precisely that construction. <coughs> and then the theorem, which is uh, with um, Dmitry Markusevich and uh, Alexander Tikomirov. is the following, that uh, if I take the closure of, if I take uh, the closure of this variety inside the Maruyama scheme, this is contained in, uh, in the instant on boundary. It is uh, irreducible and the dimension is uh, 8C minus four. Okay. So these things are divisorial components of the boundary, uh, of the instanton boundary. Uh, moreover, and this is what shows that the instanton boundary gets a growing number of components as C grows, right? So the number of components in the instanton boundary also go, grows to infinity as the charge as C goes to infinity. And uh, the second part of the theorem is that every point in that set, so for every F, <coughs> every point in that set is uh, stable And it is a smooth point of the Maruyama scheme. So, uh, in other words, the dimension of the x1 ff is 8c minus 3, and the dimension of the x2 of ff is 0. Okay, so it's a, a smooth point of the singular of the Maruyama scheme. But here you also considering, uh, so this set has the smooth rational curves, but you, you also have some degenerate rational curves here. Right? So when you take the closure, you're also allowing the rational curve, the singular locus, to degenerate into more complicated rational curves. <clears throat> okay, so then encouraged by our little game with rational curves, we decided to play with elliptic curves. Uh, and then uh, there are two easy ways to, uh, to, to construct uh, elliptic curves. One is by elliptic cortex, intersection of two quadrics in P3. Uh, and the other is uh, elliptic cubic, right? So a plane cubic in P3. Uh, okay, so then let's start. So. I'm going to define this uh, set now, uh, Q5. The sheaves in M5 such that <coughs> um, F double jewel is an instant on sheaf of charge one, in other words, a no correlation bundle. So the double jewel of F is a no correlation bundle. And, uh, and sing F is a smooth elliptic quartic. Of course, modulo isomorphisms. Uh, so in other words, uh, again, precisely what I mean is that the condition should be that F double dual F is uh, some direct image of L for some L in uh, peak minus one, or sorry, peak zero of sigma. And uh, non-trivial, so L is not The non-triviality is to account for this condition here. <coughs> Can't you first by 
Sorry? Yeah, uh, the L here is not twisted by two, but then uh, the phi will be onto the, the twisted by two here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So you're right. So I have to twist by two. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's count parameters here. So how many? How many of these should it be? Or maybe I could uh, state the theorem first. So, the theorem says that also in the same joint work with uh, Markusevich and Tikomirov, uh, it says that the closure of Q5 is an irreducible component of uh, M5 of dimension uh, 37, which, by the way, is the same as the dimension of I5. Right, so M5 will have at least two components of dimension 37, and um, yeah, one of uh, the instanton bundles and the other one of these instanton sheaves, uh, which are singular along an elliptic cortic. Um, and again, uh, you can also show that the dimension of the X1 of the points here is 37, and the dimension of the X2 is zero. So these are also, uh, when f is in, uh, so this is for f in q5, not in the closure of q5, but in, sorry, not in the closure, uh, when f is in q5. So the generic point of this component is a smooth point of the Maruyama scheme. Um, and then how do you, how do you count? So, uh, the proof of the theorem has two parts, right? One is computing these uh, x, finding these values. And the other part is counting the number of parameters here. So how many parameters we have? So Q5 uh, it projects into I1. Right, so just take uh, f and send it to its double jewel. So this has dimension five. This is an open subset of P5. Uh, what is the fiber? The fiber you have to take uh, an elliptic, well, maybe the, the, the smartest way would be to send this to the elliptic cortex. Uh, so you take F and you send it to the support of F double jewel F. So this is a kind of um, Giesecker to Uhlenbeck map, right? That you take the double jewel and then the, the, uh, the singular part. <coughs> Now, I can't remember the dimension of the singular cortex, but we, it's, it's the right thing. So what is the, uh, the fiber here? The fiber at each point will be precisely the, the, the Picard, the peak zero of the curve. Right? So the, the piece of data that once I get the curve and the double jewel, the piece of, piece of data that is missing is this line bundle here. Okay? So this has dimension one, and this has the right dimension, right? So it's, uh, well, we take two quadrics. So it's 19, of, uh, take two, two quadrics. 
Oh, and then there is a, a, another piece of data, which is the phi, right? Because you also need a, a map from f double joule to this sheet here. Right? So, uh, so this is also in the in, in the fiber there. So plus times the projectivization of the home uh, from f double joule to that sheet there. Right. So if you count right the dimensions, and there is some effort in, in how to compute this, if you count right the dimensions, this is precisely 37. So this is a family, uh, a 37 dimensional family of instant on sheaves, and then you go compute that the tangent space in the Maruyama scheme has dimension 37. So this is uh, another irreducible component because the instant on component also has dimension 37. Okay, so that's the, the idea behind the, uh, the theorem. And to complete my last five minutes, you can play the same game for the um, plane cubics. Some care has to be taken here. We are not taking uh, F double jewel to be any instanton bundle. We only take uh, instanton bundles of charge one because the cohomology is just right so that you can prove, for instance, the existence of this uh, surjective map. Right? So this is, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the, the hard part of the elementary transformation is showing that there is such a subjective map. And uh, it's in, in this that the hypothesis that the double jewel is a no correlation bundle enters. Uh, so for, to do an elementary transformation along a plane cubic, we start with the trivial bundle. So the other component we define, Q3, the set of Fs inside uh, M3, such that F double jewel is the trivial sheaf. <clears throat> this, is, this is what we call the instanton of charge zero. Right, so the, the instanton bundle with, uh, with zero second chain class. And, uh, and sing F is a plane cube, is a smooth plane cubic. And the theorem here, well, we'll you can, to be precise, you have to write down something similar to this. <clears throat> and uh, the theorem says that Q3 bar uh, is an irreducible component of M3. Why three? Because it's zero plus the degree of the curve, three. Zero, the charge of the double jewel and uh, three, the degree of the curve of dimension 21. Which, by the way, is also the dimension of the instantons of charge three, right? So the, the dimension is eight C minus three. So eight, uh, so it's 21 for C equals three. Uh, and also, so for the F inside Q3, uh, the dimension of the x1 is the right one, and the dimension of the x2 is zero. Okay, so these are also smooth points in the Maruyama scheme, uh, making a, a torsion free component in M3. Okay? So that's all that I had for today. Thank you very much for the attention.